Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Clint Neal. I'm one of the personal trainers here at the JCA and welcome to my sit and get fit balance class. Uh, in today's class, like my others, if you aren't new and you're, you've been to those, um, I'm going to cover some beginner, uh, a little bit more intermediate, and a little bit of advanced balance exercises, but I'm going to incorporate it so you use your muscles too, so you kind of get more bang for your buck. The three things we need, if you didn't already know, was a chair or something sturdy to hold on to for safety's sake. If you don't need it, that's great. If you do, then definitely use that. Also a mat, kind of preferably the cushiony kind, and a light object. I'm using a ball filled with air, but you could use your fist if you need to. So we'll get started with a little bit of a warm-up exercise. So on here, what I'm going to do is, my chair's here if I need it, but I'm going to exaggerate my marching in place. So a regular march is like that. We're going to go a little bit slower and exaggerate how slow we go and how high we get our knee up, because that means I'm on one leg longer period of time and therefore requires more balance than going quickly. Get that knee up as high as you feel comfortable. So if you could go up higher than I can, that's great. If you can't, that's fine too. Just warming up these leg muscles, warming up the core. Slow and controlled motion. Getting those knees up. All right, this next one isn't so much a balance exercise, but it is good for the hips and the lower back. We want a wider than shorter width stance, hands on the hips, and make big circles. Go on as big of a circle as you feel comfortable. We'll go entirely on one side first, and then reverse the direction, and switch, same thing. Reverse the circle. Couple more. All right, good. On this one, you might need a chair. I'm gonna use it just, just in case. The center line is considered nose, sternum, mid chest, and navel. So what I wanna do is, my leg, I wanna go across my center line Create a big circle and down. Now, if you could do this with, without touching the floor, that's great. But once again, it's loosening up those muscles, getting the heart rate going a little bit, because everybody's leg weighs something, and it's not always that easy to move it, depending on how you're moving it. Nice big rotation. And switch. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So once again, I want to cross my center line up, out, and away from the center line. And as I said before, if you need to touch the floor, do so. Just try not to if you can help it. Like it's going to fatigue quicker, but it's better for the endurance part of the exercise and strengthening, these, strengthening those muscles as well. All right, very good. One more warm-up exercise. And this one, depending on your balance, could be considered a balance exercise. Uh, for others, it might be too easy, but it's a good way to kind of loosen up the back. So I'm standing at this direction so you can see me. Hands close. What I'm slowly going to do is turn to one side, reach back as far as I feel comfortable, come back to neutral, then the same thing on the other side. Come back to neutral. Reach, reach, reach. Try to hold briefly and come back. We got one more on the other side. And back. All right, so just that little bit of a warm up. Okay, I'm gonna use my chair on this one. So if you're familiar with the class, once again, the leg that's closest to the chair, that's the one I'm gonna stand on. Don't lock up the knee. Bad for the knee, and it hinders balance. So we want to keep it slightly bent. What I'm going to do is keep my other leg straight. I'm going to raise it as high as I feel comfortable. Come down, but don't touch the floor. 
like I always say, if you need to touch the floor, do so. But if you don't have to, then don't. That way it works the leg muscles even harder. It makes the class more tough, but that way you kind of, you know, get more out of it. Balance and a little bit of a workout as well. Sounds good to me. Just a couple more. All right, same thing on the, on the other side. Now, of course, you don't have to move your chair. I'm doing so for the video and for you guys. But you'll notice that I only do one set per side for most of the exercises. That way I can get as many different exercises in the time frame, which gives you guys more of ability to do what you like later on when you could uh, pause, rewind, fast forward, that kind of stuff if you need to. A couple more. And rest, because of course in general, if it's fun, or at least more tolerable, you're more likely to do it. If it's not fun, it's too easy to quit. All right, so on this one, we went to the front. Now we're gonna go to the back. So same form and technique. I will lean a little bit forward to compensate the weight of my leg so as not to put too much pressure on the lower back. But I'm not going for height per se, so I'm not swinging. I'm actually just raising my leg, fighting gravity. Swinging can cause momentum. Momentum can cause injury. So don't want to get injured while trying to improve my balance. I'm improving balance to try to avoid injuries. Couple more on this side. Good, we'll do the same thing on the other leg. Once again, nice, slow control motion. And last two. All right, good. Now we'll do the lateral later on because we already did the front and to the rear. This time we're gonna do a squat modification. The modification is, here's a chair. But we're gonna do it two different ways and to make it more user friendly on the back and knees because squats get a bad reputation, but that's because there's a lot of people that do them wrong. And of course, if you do something wrong, you're more likely to hurt yourself. So on this one, we want, once again, a wide stance, kind of like we did when we did that hip rotation. Same distance, if you need a little bit closer, you can keep the chin up. Okay, so you want to keep your back straight. That doesn't mean we can't bend forward. My back is still straight. I'm just bending at the hips. So don't think straight up and down. That's going to be bad for the knees. Plus, I'll end up missing my chair and falling to the floor. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to raise my arms, raise the center of gravity. And I'm just going to touch my bottom to the chair. Now, if you can't go down all the way, that's fine. Just go as far as you feel comfortable. But don't actually sit and press back up. So we breathe in all the way down. Exhale as you lift. The key on this one is not to actually sit because that's what we're going to do on the second set. You'll feel the difference if you're not familiar with this exercise. But notice my nose goes forward, butt goes back, and then I'm pressing against the floor as I extend upward. Yeah, you're lifting your body, but technically what I'm doing and you'll feel the difference when you do, we do the sitting squats is that you do press against the ground or against the floor as you lift up. Try a couple more. One more. Breathe in, breathe out. Good. Shake out those legs if you need to. So once again, the main difference on the next one is when we sit, we're going to sit as if we're sitting on the couch, on the chair, that kind of thing. But we have to re-engage the muscles. So what I mean is on that squat, because I never actually touch, I can't lift both legs at the same time because there's nothing else supporting me. On this one, we're going to disengage, which means we're going to sit. You can raise both legs and then we have to re-engage. So it's a different type of coordination for the squat. So I'm going to go down, sit, okay? Now my posture just went straight up. I don't want to try to go up like this because the same thing, I don't have enough leverage forward 
and I'm gonna fall back, that's dangerous. So nose, past toes are close to it. Once again, press against the floor and your body extends upwardly. Down, sit, shift forward without rocking. Once again, try not to use balance or momentum. Exhale as you lift. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Couple more. One more. Breathe in and exhale. Good. Once again, shake out the tension if you need to. A little bit of lactic acid might be in the legs. Alrighty, on this next one, it's going to be the classic heel to toe walking. And we'll do it three different ways, progressing to a little bit more difficult as we go. And we're gonna do a lap. So we're gonna go down and back. That counts as one lap. So we're gonna start with the easier way, but make a good judgment. If it's challenging, you could attempt the next one, but just you know be mindful uh, that you might have to stick with this one throughout the next two uh, difficulty uh, levels. So once again, posture's nice and tall. Eyes on the horizon, heel to toe. Once again, it's not a race, so I just want to pay attention to what I'm doing. Of course, that's a little bit harder while I'm talking, but um, nice, slow, and controlled motion. It's not a race. Now, if you need to put your arms out to the side, do so, but try not to if you can help it, because it's, well, it helps, so it's kind of like cheating. And if it's too easy for your body to do it, there's nothing really for your body to acclimate to, so it's not gonna really have a chance to improve. Gotta be enough of a challenge there to force your body to adjust. Those adjustments will make you better, and better is good. All right, so good job, you made it through the first round. So once again, depending on how challenging that was for you, can dictate how you handle this next one. Same footwork for the next two sets. However, I'm not gonna keep my eyes on the horizon straight ahead. I'm gonna slowly turn my head to the right and then again to the left, back to the right and repeat that motion. And it gets more challenging because a lot of balance is visual too. So uh, that way if you really need this tough, close your eyes and do it. But uh, I don't recommend that unless this is way too easy. All right. One more time back. Once again, slowly turn the head. You don't want to snap your head and potentially hurt your neck. so far hope, to, hope it is so the next one's going to be a little bit more challenging than that one once again the footwork stays the same this time i'm going to look up and then look down without too quick of a head motion still the one foot in front of the other slow and controlled motion and this one's a bit more challenging at least for me Just do the best you can. Straight up and straight down. All right, now we gotta head back to whence we came, head to toe. distracted because the noise outside the room but that does bring up the thing with it when it comes to balance distractions can be uh, tough so that's why if you're walking and the ground's uneven 
You can still try to chat, chit chat if you want to to the person next to you. Just try to stay focused on what's in front of you. Because if this is uneven and you're chit chatting like this, that's when accidents happen. Because falling for no reason is a much different thing than falling because you tripped. However, if your balance is good, you might have a better chance when you trip to recover. Maybe not, but it, it really depends on the circumstance and how fit you are and your reaction time and all that good stuff. But if you are focused, there's a better chance that you're not falling than if you're not paying attention. So um, kind of self-explanatory, but just wanted to remind you of that. All right, we will grab our chair again. So on this one here, as you noticed earlier, we went front and back. Now we're gonna to go to the side. So once again, leg closest to the chair, slightly bent. Posture is nice and tall, leg out to the side. Once again, without swinging or using momentum. Of course, don't judge based on me. So if you could go higher, that's awesome. Not as high, that's fine too. Just do the best that you feel comfortable doing safely. Up and down. We have one more on this side. Ooh, feel the burn a little bit. All right. Once again, chins up and begin. Yep, legs starting to get heavy, but that's okay. And two more. Good, all right. On this next one, we'll use that light object. Well, if you don't wanna, wanna use one or you don't have one handy, um, once again, you could just use a closed fist or you could even use your open hand. We're using the object because we want this as our focal point because if you're not holding something, eyes will kind of drift depending on where you are, where surroundings, TV could be on. Hopefully you're looking at your phone or computer for this. But anyway, there's distractions. So what we want to do, feet close together. Now, if this one's tough for you, just spread your feet a little bit farther apart. That makes it easier. Feet close together. I'm going to take the ball, go as far as I feel comfortable, close to this leg as I can. Keeping my eyes on the target. Up. And then repeat that motion. Now, if you have a bad rotator cuff or bursitis or sore shoulder for whatever reason and that hurts, then as you come up, keep the elbow close to the body and just raise it up to here. Don't extend outwardly because that's going to put more pressure on your shoulder. So for the rest of us who um, our shoulders don't hurt, it's going to be down close to the body. Once again, eyes on the target and up. And it's really important not to go too quickly on this one because it can cause dizziness. So you don't want to do this one too quickly. Now, if you are starting to get dizzy, try to do it without looking at the ball or the object, and that should make it easier and probably won't trigger the dizziness. And switch, so we're gonna do the same thing. Once again, to protect the back, don't reach out too far. Um, you wanna stay close to the body. Nice, slow and controlled motion. Hope, so, hope it feels good so far. We just have two more. Well, two more after that one, so two more now. And last one. All right, good. So we'll put the object down. Now in this one, we're gonna do what I call the tabletop. So I don't want your foot to fall as your leg gets heavier it's gonna have the tendency to wanna to go down. And I definitely need the chair for this one because this one's a challenge for me. I'm gonna lift my leg up, gonna try to keep it at that height for the entire 180 degree range of motion. So if you see me on this first repetition, I keep the leg up and back. Now you notice 
I'm leaning very much in the opposite direction of the light. We've worked the core a lot. Don't forget, core isn't just the abs, it's back here too. So it works hard enough. I don't want it to overdo it or overtax it. So I'm leaning in the opposite direction because once again, my leg weighs something. So to compensate, my upper body weighs something too. So I'm trying to balance it out. So, so leg up, once again, not a race. Trying not to drop that foot and trying to complete the entire 180 if we can. So in this one, we're fighting gravity the whole time. So there's really no perfect way to breathe in, breathe out, but you don't want to hold your breath. So just try to keep your breathing natural. Not short bursts, not long, slow breaths. Although long, slow breaths would be better than the quick burst of breath, but or quick burst of breathing. And one more. All right, how's that? Obviously, you can't answer me here yet, but hopefully you're doing well. Same thing on the other side. Don't want to be lopsided, so we got to get that leg up. Keep it up the best we can. Full range of motion. Lost my balance there for seconds. Believe it or not, talking and doing these is a little bit tougher simply because I'm trying to think before I speak. Therefore, my train of thought isn't as much on keeping my balance as it is saying the right thing at the right time, right pace, because I can't edit this, <laughs> retape it and make it sound awesome each time. So it's like a live, well, live balance class. And down. Good. All right. So this next one, we're going to use the mat. We're going to use it from the floor. So if you don't have a mat already, um, if your floor is comfortable to have your knees on, like a carpeted floor or something, or if you have a pillow handy, or um, you know, fold up a towel, you can do that. On this one here, we're gonna do the Superman or something like that. Uh, we're not laying down though, we're gonna be on all fours. So this hand is closest to you guys. So I'm gonna raise this hand, this is my right hand and my left leg goes up. Now to make it a little bit more difficult balance wise, as I go up as high as I feel comfortable, I come down, but I'm not gonna touch the floor or try not to touch the floor with my hand or near foot. So once again, I'm gonna be raising this one and because we're going against gravity, that's when we wanna exhale. So breathe in, exhale as we lift, calm down, but try not to touch the floor. Exhale as we lift. We wanna keep that core engaged. Exhale as we lift. Couple more. All right, reset. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. You don't have to switch like this, but I'm going to. So now I'm gonna lift my left hand and then my right leg goes up. Okay, so once again, get stable. And exhale as we lift. Breathe in on the way down. Once again, try not to touch the floor. Only doing so if necessary. Couple more. And rest. Good. All right. Now we're going to use the mat again, this time with the chair. So if your mat isn't cushiony and fairly thick like this one is. Uh, you might be able to use a pillow that you don't mind stepping on. Um, you might want to take your shoes off for this one if you're going to be stepping on your pillow, but that's entirely up to you. So what I'm going to do on this one, same as before, the leg that's closer to the chair, that's the one I'm standing on. So I stand in the middle of the pad and it's not real stable. That's going to make this a harder balance. 
If I can, I'll let go of the chair, but only once I feel confident that I could do so without too much wobble. So my knee's gonna come up to the center. Now I don't wanna go straight down because I hit the mat, so I'm gonna go out to the side, which changes my center of gravity. So I have to lean over slightly to compensate the weight of the leg. But that's another good reason why we don't wanna to go too quickly, because if I overcompensate too quickly, that really, once again, hinders balance. So speed is not your friend if you're trying to maintain balance. So once again, this leg slightly bent. Now those muscles in my feet and calves and quads here, and even the hamstrings and glutes are going nuts to be coordinated because I have to fire, relax, fire, relax to be able to try to do this smoothly. And rest, good. All right, we'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, same thing. Good posture, knee up in the center, out to the side, slow and controlled motion. So once again, my leg weighs something, so as I fight gravity, that's when you want to exhale. Breathe in, exhale. Now technically, I'm still fighting gravity holding my leg up, but the downward part, I'm just fighting coming down quickly. So technically, gravity is pulling down on the leg. Uh, yeah. I'm just resisting it some so it doesn't just go kerplunk down to the floor. Exhale, breathe in. Two more. Exhale, breathe in. And last one. And rest. Good. All right, so we'll put our mat back to the side here. All right, so on this next one, ooh, legs are burning. So what we want to do on this one is, it's kind of like a kick, but I don't want you to think kick because that's speed but we're gonna do a leg extension from the knee downward, but we're gonna do it in three different uh, directions. So what I'm gonna do is bring my leg up to neutral. So obviously my leg's bent. So that's what I mean the kick is we're gonna extend the leg, bring it back to neutral. To the side, back to neutral, leg bent, extend backward and up. Once again, I'm leaning in the opposite direction to counterweight the, the leg but the key is always bring it back to neutral. It's a little bit more challenging that way, but it's working those muscles. And that's the thing with endurance. What if you're out in town somewhere and you start to get tired? Your body's still gonna have to balance itself because you don't wanna fall just because you're fatigued. So balancing exercises in a safe environment like this is a good time to to do it when you are a little bit tired because of that challenge to your body and your body needs to acclimate to that to improve and get better. And we're out. Because whether it's cardio, lifting weights, Pilates, yoga, it's, if you don't challenge yourself at least some, you're not going to get better. So your body doesn't have a reason to acclimate. It already has if it's easy. All right, leg up and begin. And this one doesn't really matter what order you go in, because I've seen some people, they get confused with the order. You know which three directions it is, so just try to hit each direction during each rep. So if you want to go side, front, and back, you can because I hit all three. So that's a dealer's choice. You can pick which one you want, but just try to hit all three directions. One more front, side, and back. Good. All right, on this next one, it's a little bit tougher, but we're going to start with the easy way and then work our way up. So if you want to use a chair for this, you can. It's going to start out looking more like a, what's called a curtsy squat, and we're going to go up to a skater jump, okay? So if I'm holding onto my chair lightly, the back leg, 
that's gonna go behind me and to the side as far as I feel comfortable. So to make that happen, I do have to bend the supporting leg more if I want more distance with the other one. Now, right now we're gonna toe tap, bring it back up. Toe tap, back up. Once again, speed is crucial, so you don't wanna to go too quickly. And as your confidence goes up, rely less and less on the chair, which makes balance harder makes your body have to work harder to acclimate and get better at balance. All right, same thing other side. So once again, the other leg is gonna go back. So it's simultaneously going that way and that way, as far as I feel comfortable. So it really depends on how well you could bend the supporting leg to accomplish this range of motion. Try a couple more. And one more. All right, so you probably guessed it. The high, more difficult way of this one is no toe tap. So we're gonna go back, not touch, and up. Now you can touch here if you want, but if you need it more difficult or more of a challenge, then don't do that. So it's no touch, no touch. This is where posture, I'm gonna give it a shot, so we'll see. Back and up. So as you may notice too, confidence plays a role in balance. So if you don't think you can, there's a very good chance you won't be able to. So it's good to build the confidence up and switch. <laughs> All right, same thing. So. Go back, not touch. Oh, I did touch there, but that's okay. You don't have to beat yourself up, just do the best you can. But notice I had to slow it down even more because that going slower actually helps my body adjust when it has to do it quickly. Like people have to do in sports, they're more li likely to have an injury fall, trip, that kind of stuff because of the speed. It looks good, but as we get older, it's a little bit tougher. And in some cases, a lot tougher. All right. So I'm not gonna use my chair on this one, but you could certainly do so if you need to. So this one, we're gonna do a step, not the jump yet, but gradually getting up. So we're gonna step over, touch. Step over, touch. Oh, I went too fast. <laughs> so see, paying attention to what I'm doing. There we go. Couple more. Alright, see, and I did much better that time because I, I kind of had to regain my focus there. Okay. So the next one we're gonna do, we're gonna add the jump. We're still gonna do the toe touch. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this leg jumping. So I jump, toe touch, jump, toe touch. Collect myself, go. So basically we're just regaining composure and then when you're set, then you jump again. Now of course, if you can't do the jumping part or don't want to, then stick to the part prior to this one where you don't actually jump. And one more to our right. All right, very good. We got one more set. This one is similar to that one, only you guess it, no toe touch in the back. All right, so good luck to you, good luck to me. We don't need luck, but that'll be fun. So we jump, don't touch, get composure. Just do the best you can. Make those minor adjustments when you need to. Try not to move your arms too much so you can help it because that actually hinders balance. Couple more. Ta-da! All right, 
All set. So hopefully you enjoyed the class. Once again, my name is Clint Neal, personal trainer here at the JCA. And this was my sit, get, fit, balance class. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you next time. And uh, have a great day, everybody.